Okay, good morning everyone. Yeah, my name is Mobayode. I'm an assistant professor at Glindor University. I work together with Professor Liu, he's at Glasgow University. And Professor Liu currently leads the Artificial Intelligence Driven Design Automation Center, which is based here at Wrexham Glindor University, and I carry out all the technical projects. So primarily today, what I'm going to be doing is I'll be demonstrating to you how the Antenna Design Explorer works. And the Antenna Design Explorer is a software which we've designed here at the IDAC WGU, and it's mainly used for the optimization of microwave antennas using a state-of-the-art algorithm, SADEA, proposed by Dr. Liu. Now today I'll be using two pro three problems rather to, to demonstrate how SADA works to you. So this is the first problem, which is a quasi Yagi Uda antenna. I'm going to be showing you this structure later on in CST Microwave Studio. And as you can see, here we have the optimization goal, which is to minimize the maximum return loss from 10 gigahertz to 11 gigahertz subject to the mean gain greater than or equal to six. And you can see the design parameters here for the optimization. So primarily what we want to do is we want to adjust S1 from three mm to seven mm to figure out the best value for S1 that is going to satisfy this goal. We do the same for S2, V1, V2, U1, U2, U3, and U4. So we want to find the best set of parameters within these set ranges that will make the antenna to give us this performance. And to do that, we are going to be using the Antenna Design Explorer. So very quickly, if I show you this model, in CST Microwave Studio, Now, this is the antenna model. Of course, this has been designed by an antenna engineer. You have the parameters there. And we are not going to be considering all these parameters. We are going to be focusing on the parameters that are most sensitive to the performance of the antenna. So if we look at the return loss here, so what we want to do is to get the return loss to be less than minus 10 as far as possible, because minus 10 is the reference point between 10 and 11 gigahertz. Okay, so we want to minimize this to get it to be less than minus 10 dB, in most cases, even up to minus 20 dB. So we want to lower this from 10 to 11 gigahertz. And also for the gain, we want to make sure the mean gain that is between 10 and 11 is equal to six. So this is what we want to do for this structure. And how do we carry that out? We are going to use the Antenna Design Explorer. And I'm going to demonstrate how to do this to you. So later on, you will need to install ADE. And for you to run, you need to have runtime. Now, this is the ADE interface. This is the ADE interface. If I'm to start a new project, all I need to do is I need to click on new. And I'm going to specify the project name in a folder where I want it to be saved. So if I want it to be saved in that folder, I'm just going to specify that 
As you can see, for the examples we are going to be doing today, I've already set all of them up. So I can just say project new container optimization. And you're going to have that there. Now the next thing to do is to set the design variables. Now in this case, for this example, we do not have geometric constraints. We do not have smart parameters. So we just focus on the design variables. Now, if we look at the model in CST, so you can tell we have U1, U2, U3, U4, U5. And these are the parameters we are very much interested in. So I'm going to demonstrate to you now how you can set this. So let's just consider U1, U2, U3, U4 for demonstration. I'm going to load the preset project later on. So the first parameter is U1. And we have the range there to be from two to six. Two to six. The next one is U2. We have the range to be from two to six. I had that. And the next one is U3, one to five. One to five. And we have U4. One to five. Now I'm going to save that. After setting the design variables, we go to the simulator settings. Now, because I'm using CST 2019, I need to select 2017 or above. Now, because my simulation is in the time domain, so as you can see, I'm using the transient solver in CST, time domain solver, not the frequency domain solver. You have several other solvers in CST. So all I need to do here is select the time domain solver. Now, if I check my simulation time in CST, log file, if I scroll down, I can see that my simulation time is one minute, six seconds. So this is about 126 or let's say 130 seconds. So we are told to set this simulation timeout to be two to three times longer than that. So we have 500, which is more than sufficient. So I save this. Okay, if I do that, I need to browse the simulation part as well, which is the installation part for CST on your computer. So you can find that here, programs, CST, and all you need to do is to select the executable file. And I save that. Okay. Now, after you finish the simulator settings, you now need to build the data set. So for the response name, you can give it any name. In this case, I'm just going to say S parameters, S par, and gain. And this is going to be via simulation. You can use other custom methods. So if you have another software, or if you have like a function in MATLAB, you can use other custom functions as well. Now for the simulation model, I know it's in this folder, so I need to browse there. So if I go to desktop, Antenas, YUA, that's my simulation model. And I can create my response files. Now to add the S parameter results, I'll go back to CST. I can tell that my S parameter is on the second port. So that is 22, S22. So I just go back there. I'm going to add 22. 
in some cases it's going to be S11, S12 if it's transmission coefficient and things like that. Now, because I also want to get the gain, I need to specify the path for the gain. So if you look at that, we have tables, 1D results and gain. So I'm going to specify that as tables slash 1D space results slash gain. Okay. Now these are all post-processing results. So you could have a power beam weight, you could have front to back ratio, depending on how you want to characterize the antenna. And I'm going to add that there. So I've got two responses now, and I can save this. And I can save this as well. So after we finish building the data set, let's close CST. So after we finish building the data set, we need to set the objective functions. And that has to correspond to this, okay? So we have one objective function and a constraint for this particular problem. So for the function name, I'm just going to call that maximize, uh, minimization of the max S parameter. So I'm going to create this function. Now you have this. You can tell this is the cell for the S parameters, which is our objective function. So what I can do is I'm just going to have S22 to be equal to this value here. Semicolon. Now the output should be the max of S22. Now, because we want S22 between 10 and 11 gigahertz, we need to figure out the frequency index later on. I'm going to show you how to do this. And also, because this is going to return not just the S parameter values, but it's also going to return the frequency values. Okay, so this is going to be two columns with several rows. So we need to be very specific that we are interested in just the second column. So we are going to define the index later on. as a comment there. And even though this is a MATLAB function, remember you are not to use end termination because this will throw an error in the software. So that's for the objective function. I'm going to save that. Now for the constraints, we can call this mean or let's say average gain. You can either use auto penalty coefficient or you give it a penalty coefficient of 50 yeah, because very often we want the gain, in fact in most cases, we want the constraint to be met first before the algorithm focuses on the objective function. So we usually give this a very high penalty value. Okay, so we create that. Now, by inspecting this, we can tell this is our gain value here. So we can also say average, let's just say, yes, let's say average gain is equal to, no, we can't use that because that's the name of the function. So let's just say gain, AVG is equal to, second column as well, and Z should be the mean of that output. Now, because we need to 
maximize the gain, and most algorithms are solving minimization problems. So we need to negate this output. Okay, and we can use this threshold here to also close it such that once we have a mean gain to be equal to six, then we can tell that the constraint has been satisfied and this will return a value of zero. Okay, so if you have maximization problems and you're using an algorithm, just take note of the fact that you need to negate the output. So the algorithm is going to be trying to find minus six all the time. So it's going to be reducing from maybe minus four to minus five to minus six. But in reality, it's carrying out a maximization. So we are going to check the indexes later on. And we are going to save that. Okay, now based on what I've specified, all you need to do now is to carry out a sample verification. Now, if you've designed a model and you're very familiar with it, you can set values here that are in the model already, and you can check the output from this sample verification to see if it corresponds to the response of the model. So if I carry out a test, let's use batch test, yeah, because I haven't specified numbers there. So you can use batch test, you can use maybe five designs, 10 designs, 20 designs that will be generated randomly. So let's just use one design. So as you can see, AD here has called CST. And it's going to run a simulation. Based on the random design generated. So we need to wait for that. And once this is finished, I'm going to load up the actual project as the pre-saved project. So as you can see, this has returned a current maximum value for the return loss to be minus 0 0.32874 and a mean gain of 4.8349, considering that we've did, uh, we, we have six minus the actual value. Now remember, this is over the entire frequency point but we are very much interested in just 10 to 11 gigahertz. So now we know the setup is okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up the actual project now, which has been preset. And to do that, all you need to click on is project. So once you've saved your project, just like the one we've created now, and you want to reopen it in AD, all you need to do is click on this file, okay? So if I go back, and this is the 
full YUA project. So if I click on project, I can open that. And as you can see, I have all the design variables in there. The simulator settings, everything is fine. The objective settings, so let's see that. Now we need to adjust this. And for the constraints, let's see that. We need to adjust this as well. So how do we tell the exact frequency points we are interested in? If you get into MATLAB, and if I open Project YUA, you can see we have simulation results for gain, and we also have simulation results for the return loss, S22. So let's load for the return loss. These are the frequency points, and these are the S parameter values. So we are interested in 10 to 11 gigahertz. So let's look for 10. So that is 439, that's approximately 10. And let's look for 11 to 564. So if I get back onto ADE, if I close that, So well, this is going to be from 439 to 564. And in this way, we specified 10 gigahertz to 11 gigahertz. got two of this open so let's close one because we don't need to okay now we need to do the same thing for the gain yes so we need to do the same thing for the gain so if I get back into MATLAB I see the gain So let me see that. So for the gain, you can tell this is going to be from 10, sorry, from four to nine. No, four to six rather, 10 to 11. It's just four to six. So we have to put that there as well, four to six. Ten gigahertz to eleven gigahertz, and I can save that. Save. Save. So I'm going to run a sample verification again. And once this is finished, we move on straight to using the actual algorithm.
Okay, so we have that for the S parameters and we have that for the mean gain. So like I said, if you want to check that this is correct, all you need to do is open your model in CST. Open your model in CST just to make sure that the socket and all your settings are correct. Open your model in CST. Check the response value from 10 to 11. If the maximum value is the same as that, once you've updated your model with this value. So you need to change u underscore d high hard to that value, u underscore d to that value, then you simulate your model and check if the maximum return loss from 10 to 11 is this value. And also for the gain, you need to check if the minimum, sorry, the mean, the average now, minus, six minus the average, if it's going to give you this value, then you can tell that your socket works fine. And that's the main reason why you have the sample veri verification process because the optimization is com it could be computationally expensive and it makes no sense if your settings are wrong and you leave the algorithm to run for several days. Okay, now for the optimization settings, you have a number of algorithms there. So you could also use your own custom function. You could also write your own algorithm in MATLAB and use that. But primarily we're interested in Dr. Bo's algorithm, which is SADEA. And you can use auto settings. This is what's recommended. So you just click auto settings, you click auto settings as well. And once you've done all of that, you need to read up the paper to understand the difference between ISS and PAS. So ISS, ISS is going to work for all antenna problems, okay? But PAS is going to work for most antenna problems. But one is more computationally expensive than the other. So ISS, ISS takes more time for the surrogate modeling compared to PAS. Okay, and this is just the number of prediction points you want to use. You could use eight or six, but I think the default is eight. Okay. And also to, for you to understand the difference between Kriegin and blind Kriegin, you need to you need to read the paper as well. So these are just the settings for the surrogate modeling. And once you've done that, all you need to do is to click the run button to start the optimization, okay? Now, because I have a saved algorithmic state, I can choose for it to continue or I can ask it to start a new run. So I'm going to ask it to start a new run now. So as I mentioned to you before, once you've carried out all the settings and you've also used the automatic settings or the default settings for the SADA algorithm, all you need to do is click run. And as you can see, once the optimization starts, you are going to have the optimization dashboard. And this is going to tell you the number of iterations or EM simulations you've solved so far. This is going to give you the best value for your objective function. So if you have constraints, definitely are going to have several other values here. And this is going to tell you the population diversity. That's the standard deviation between the candidate designs. So if you have higher population diversity, which means there's still much space to search. Okay, so this just tells you that there is still much space to search. So if you have low population diversity, which means there isn't much space to search again using your search boundaries. And you have the convergence trend here, which just shows you how the optimization progresses. And if you see that you have the same value over several hundreds of simulations or iterations, then you should be able to infer intuitively that probably this problem has converged and may not be able to improve. So if for instance, if I have, maybe this is from 
instead of 10, I have this to be maybe from 500 to 1,500, and the value is still the same. So this tells you that probably the optimization has converged and you've obtained the best solution already. Okay, and this shows you the simulation progress in CST and the rest. Now I'm going to stop this And I'll come back to the optimization later on. But I need to show you the two problems you are going to be looking at now. So this is the second problem. Also an antenna modeled in CST. If you need more information on these models, I'm very happy to share that with you. Yeah, but this is not necessary for now. Okay, so the primary objective here, or the optimization goal is just one, which is the minimization of the maximum return loss in this band, the wireless LAN band. But you can see here we have a geometric constraint, constraint which we are using to ensure that this slot here is always under the DHA rubric during the optimization process. In other words, as we vary these values for different possible candidate designs, we want to make sure that this DHAR brick is always aperture coupled. So we want to have this under the DHAR brick in all possible cases. And I'm going to show you how you can include this in your optimization setup. Now the second, sorry, the, the third problem is a secularly polarized dual band elliptical patch antenna for global positioning systems and iridium applications. So you can see in this case, we have several specifications that should be 5 dB, not 510. So that's also a mistake. That should be 5 dB. So take note of that. And we have some geometry constraints as well which I'm going to be showing you how you can include this in ADE. So please pay close attention. Now, before we go straight to ADE, let me show you these models to give you a feel of what this looks like. So let's open the DRA and let's also open the elliptical patch antenna, shall we? That's the DRA there, let's zoom in. That's the slot there, okay? And that's why we are including the geometry constraint because as we optimize the antenna, the slot is going to move. But in all cases, we want this DR brick, which is made of ceramic, to always sit on the slot to have aperture coupling, okay? This is the response we are interested in. So from 5.28, from 5.28, 5.28 thereabouts to 5.72, we want the return loss to be as low as possible. Okay, for standard antenna design, we want it to be lower than minus 10 dB. And in this case, we have the voltage standing wave ratio to be less than two for good impedance matching. And this is the only response we're interested in for the DRA. Now let's look at the elliptical patch antenna. That's the elliptical patch antenna. It's dual band. So we are interested in the GPS band. We are also interested in the Iridium band. So GPS band, 1.63 gigahertz to 1.587, and the Iridium 1.616 to 1.626. So we want the return loss to be better than, to be lower than minus 10 dB in these two bands. We are also interested in the axial ratio because we want secular polarization. And for your antenna to have secular polarization, the axial ratio has to be less than 3 dB in the bandwidth of interest. Okay, so for the GPS band, we want this line to fall below 3 dB. 
And for the iridium band, we want this light to also fall below 3 dB. And we have some geometric constraints in this model. So let's see, for the DRA, we've used smart parameters to accommodate the geometric constraints we have. So if we look at that again in the PowerPoint, we are told that AC, which in the model is AY0, for some reason, the designer decided to, to name this AY0, which is that, has to be less than or equal to AY divided by two. So if we look at the arrangement here, we can tell once you, once you select smart parameters, it's going to generate this function for you. So these are the design variables being considered for the optimization. We have AX, AY, AZ, and this is AC, which is now AY0. We want this to be less than half of AY. So what we've done, if, you, if we go back to this window, Where is that window again? Yeah, this one. You can see we've set the range for this, that is for AC to be from zero to five. And now we are dividing whatever value we have by 10 and multiplying it by AY. In other words, this is going to range from zero to 0 0.5 multiplied by AY. Okay, so this is going to range from zero to 0 0.5 multiplied by AY. So I've mentioned this, that the original range is from zero to five. So dividing by 10 gives us a maximum of one over two. And whatever value we have, we multiply by AY. So this is literally going to range from zero to AY divided by two, okay? And this is how you set smart parameters. It's just simple mathematics, but you need to be very clever how you handle this. And the simulator settings there has before, nothing has changed. Building of data set is just as before, nothing has changed. Setting your objective function is just as before, nothing has changed, but you need to be mindful of the index so that you're using the exact frequency, okay? And remember the actual response is in the second column. So nothing has changed. Sample verification is still the same process. Optimizer settings is still the same process. It's still the same process. So I'm going to open the analytical patch problem now. Remember, I need to select project to load this up. Okay, and we can close this window. Now for the analytical patch problem, these are the design variables. Okay, according to this table that we have here, I think I've closed that presentation. Let me open that again. According to this table that we have here. Now, because the implementation of this in CST is rather complex, we have several geometric constraints. So you may be given an antenna problem, but the designer needs to tell you these are the geometric constraints. Yeah, because during the optimization process, the antenna's geometry is going to evolve, so it's going to change. And in all possible cases, we want to ensure congruency. Okay, we want to ensure we have reasonable designs. So for geometry constraints, yeah, just ignore this. Yeah, this is um, an error from, from the designers. Okay, so this can be used. So once you specify geometry constraints, you are going to have a function such as this. 
Okay. Now, depending on the complexity of the geometric constraints you have, you need to specify all your geometric constraints as equations in MATLAB. Okay. So, in this case, we have the patch size, which has been evaluated. This was specified by the designer. And we want the patch diameter one to always be less than or equal to the patch size. Okay. And if you look at this, this is patch diameter. Let me check properly if that is one, two. So that should be three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So ideally, this should be five. This should be five. And this should be six. Yes. So if the first patch diameter is greater than the patch size, we just reset it to be equal to the patch size. Okay, and if the second patch diameter is also greater than the patch size, we just set it to be equal to the patch size. And in this way, this constraint of having the patch diameter to be less than or equal to the patch size is always going to hold. And why do we need this constraint? Just by inspecting the model, intuitively if this patch diameter becomes bigger than the patch size then you can tell that this structure is going to become incongruent because then you have the patch extending over the substrate so that's why you need geometric constraints such as that to keep the antenna in a reasonable form where we can prototype it and also use it for our physical applications as intended. Now remember for this particular design, we have several specifications And each of these has been specified as a constraint. Okay? Because we want to use a SAD here. So you just specify all of these as constraints. So if I open the first one, that's S parameters in the GPS band. And remember, you also need to specify the index to make sure you are getting the right values, depending on the problem you have and the frequency band of interest. S parameters in the Iridium brand, um, band, you also need to specify the frequency values there, the index. CR ratio, GPS, CR ratio, iridium, okay? And we are using this three value, this three dB value here, because I mentioned to you for the antenna to be secularly polarized, we want this value here to be smaller than three or equal to three. So if we have a maximum value that is equal to three, then we have Z to be equal to zero, which means this is satisfied. Now, because we want the constraints on the axial ratio to be met first before the algorithm focuses on the, the, the constraints on the, on the return loss in the two bands, we can set the penalty coefficient for this to be equal to one, the penalty coefficient for this to be equal to one, and for the axial ratio, we just set 50-50 each. And that's how you specify multiple specifications, okay? The sample verification is going to be the same as before. 
And the only extra process that you have here is the specification of geometric constraints. So, so just, just take note of that. And of course, this is a very interactive software. So you can always play around with it. And by all means, I suggest that you have MATLAB as well, because this can run without MATLAB. So all you need to have is MATLAB runtime for uh, MATLAB 2019A. That's the, the runtime version for MATLAB 2019A. And you can run this without MATLAB. But if you have MATLAB, then you can interact with your projects even better as I've shown to you. So you can easily tell the frequency index so you don't have to specify it in the, in the actual model. And you can also look at your functions also in MATLAB. And remember, you cannot have end to terminate your function functions in the software. And you can also play around with this. So you can see to check that you are really picking the right results from CST to see that you are using the right CST model. You can also check your functions here as well and play around with them. Okay, and you're always going to have your simulation results and the algorithm state and many other things, candidate designs saved as a dot mat file all the time, which you can view in MATLAB. Okay, so technically I'm going to end the demonstration now.